Technically, this is a hard question, but it is so freaking easy if you think strategically. So here we are given a shape, but we are missing com crucial components of that shape. So look, a rectangular poster has an area of 360 square inches. A copy of the poster is made in which the length and width of the original poster are each increased by 20%. What is the area of the copy in square inches? No brainer here. I have to pick values for the length and width. They're asking me to change things that I don't know. And technically, I can never know what the length and width of this poster are, but I'm going to pick something so I at least have a number. And as long as it follows the rule that the area is 360, it really does not matter what I pick. So this is the arithmetize strategy. To me, this is an obvious case where I'm going to arithmetize. So the area of my thing is 360. That's the length times the width. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to say the length is 36 and the width is 10, right? Because 36 times 10 is a very easy way to get 360. Now I can follow this instruction really easily. I'm gonna increase the uh, dimensions by uh, 20%. So we're gonna use the basic kind of one plus or minus P open formula here. That's our formula for percentages. I could do this very easily in my calculator without showing it on the scratch, but I'm gonna do it for you. Uh, so my original, let's say the width, which I can also do in my head, is gonna be 10, and then I'm increasing it by 20%. So that's 0.2 as P, and I do one plus because it's an increase in that percentage. So 10 times 1.2 is 12. So that is my new width. Okay, and if I did the same thing for the uh, length, one plus 0 0.2 here, I would use a calculator because that one I'm a little less confident on in my uh, head. So 36 times 1.2 is 43.2. Now I have a new poster. So the new poster still is a rectangle. So its area is still length times width. My length is 43.2. My width is 12. So what do those multiply to? Let's find out. 518.4. Does it say to round? No, it does not. What is the area of the copy in square inches? So just keep it as it is. So 518.4 is an answer you can input into that, that spot, and it is the correct answer, the only correct answer. So this is a very, very important question. If you are not getting this right, there is no chance you're going to get a 700 in the math. No chance because this is not just about thinking about math in the right way, this is about thinking about SAT math in the right way. You have to be able to think strategically here, you have to be able to arithmetize, and you have to recognize that this is an arithmetized opportunity really, really quickly. Some of you may get it right without using that strategy. I don't care, don't even bother putting in the comments, I don't care about them, I won't respond. And that's because that kind of stubbornness of sticking to this kind of more algebraic way of thinking is what's going to get you in trouble. We have to be able to understand that the SAT is trying to trick us and that by having real numbers here for the length and width, we are greatly decreasing the chance that they get away with it. They get the chance that they actually trick us or trap us on a question. So it's not really just about this question. It's about that big picture, how you how go through an entire SAT math module, especially the hard one. If you are always doing things by the book, by the College Board's textbook explanation, you will not get those top scores, I promise. So the reason I knew this was an arithmetized question right away is I was asked to change something, but I didn't have the something. And I knew that I wasn't gonna, there wasn't a specific value for it. I could have picked other values for the length and the width. I could have picked 360 and one if I really wanted to. And you can go ahead and do that and feel free to comment if you get the same answer. I know you will, but you can do 360 and one, you can do 120 and three, you can do whatever, it'll all work. That's the beauty of this. Um, so another thing to point out here before I leave you with this question is if you put uh, let's see, I'll figure it out. The trap answer, which is 360 times 1.2. So I'll write that 360 times 1.2. So if you put 432 as your answer, again, you do not understand the game that you are playing. You do not understand that this is not a math test. This is an SAT. It has math on it but it does not behave the same way as a math test in school. This is very clearly a trap. You should have known before you even really started solving this question that it was gonna be more complicated than just multiplying two numbers. This is obviously a hard question. We would know that on the real SAT because it would be later on in the section, but it's in a category of questions I'm calling geometry twists. So twists means they've twisted up the normal stuff to try to trick you. So a lot of awesome stuff here. This is a really, really important question. I hope you learned something. I hope you understand 
why I'm being such a pain in the neck about using the arithmetic strategy here. It is not just about this one question. If you can recognize those opportunities to think strategically, not just in geometry, but all over the SAT math, you will do better. That is the only way to really get those really top scores.